What's up, what's up, everybody? Guess who's back? The Smoking Word Podcast is brought to you by CasaTheRock.com. You know the deal. That's my merch spot. Everything is done by your boy in-house. So you want to support the Smoking Word or you want to support me or you just want to support some fly gear, go cop some gear. We have something for you, something for her, something for them. It doesn't matter. And to celebrate 2021, I made all T-shirts $21, not for the month, but for the rest of the year. So we ain't playing games. All T-shirts, $21. We even got a couple prints for 15 that are left because we want to clear out the old and get that new in. You know, I'm always keeping it fresh and always keeping it sexy. So CasaTheRock.com, go cop some merch, $21, all T-shirts for the rest of the year. So go support the movement. Make sure you go follow us on Apple Music, Spotify, and um, YouTube. That's what it was. May, go subscribe. You know the rant. You know my deal. It doesn't count unless you subscribe. The shit is free. So all you cheap bastards got no excuse. Subscribe. I'm guilty of not subscribing in the past, but now I'm on the other side of it, and I get how it helps. It helps to it lets the, the, the people out there know that our world is out here and popping. So make sure you subscribe to the podcast, to our YouTube channel and um, make sure. Um, yeah. Follow me on um, Hoya Rock 357 on Instagram. Keep you up to date with everything. Smoking word, everything Casa the Rock and everything Madball. So look out for a new Madball album dropping this year. This COVID shit ain't stopping nothing. So we're dropping a new album this year. So look out for the 10th Madball album this year dropping. So we still grinding, everybody. And um, I want to thank everybody who's been tuning in. Been getting a lot of good feedback. A lot of people been hitting me up. And that was the whole point. I wanted to kill time with everybody. You guys help me kill time and I help you kill time. So this way we could kill something without going to jail. But, yo, shout out to everybody who's been tuning in, and especially everybody who's been writing in with, you know, questions and shouting, you know, the show out and everything. Keep them coming. You know, um, you'll get them read on the show. You could um send your questions, your shout outs, or whatever you want to say to the Smoking Word podcast um, Instagram. You could send it to my Instagram, and um, we'll get around to it. So um, make sure you hit us up. Definitely mad love to everybody supporting the movement. We got a lot of shit planned. Look out for our YouTube channel. Don't sleep on it. We're going to get that shit cracking. We're going to have some fun with it. And um, I want to shout out everybody, especially in the New York hardcore scene, you know, um, keeping the shit alive, keeping the spirit alive. So, you know, you know who you who you are out there and um. Sending mad love to everybody out there. You know, we in there and we ain't scared. You know the deal, everybody. But, yo, speaking of New York hardcore, I'm psyched to have this week my guest, one of my favorite drummers in the game and a New York hardcore OG from Nausea and now Stone Sour, New York hardcore OG, Roy Mayorga. Let's set this shit off. To the smoking wood. Yo, yo. Yo, what's up, man? Yeah. Touchdown. Well, you got sunglasses? I'm going to put sunglasses on. Yeah, now. you know what? I got bad eyes. I don't always put them to look cool, but you can put them on. But um, staring at this, sh- I'm getting old. Staring Sun- at this. Sh- you know, <laughs> staring at this shit fucks me up after a while. Same here. Now I can't see you without it. You know, after- <laughs> I'm doing this off the phone, man. My computer wasn't working right, so I hope it's okay. Yeah, no, no, nah, it's great. I'm glad I, you know, I've been wanting to get you for a minute, and I was glad to to be able to get you. You know, I know yeah. a lot of people are off, so I think you <laughs> yeah. might have some downtime. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I heard you, um, you and Craig uh, and and Mike uh, give me a shout out a few weeks ago. I thought that was really cool, man. And, oh hell um, yeah. 
And uh, you mentioned something about, you know, getting me on here. I was like, man, I hope I get to do this. It'd be great. You guys you guys had a great show, man. Oh, like hell show. yeah. Your show's yeah. awesome. Thank you, man. Yeah, you know, you know how it is. Um, I, I restarted it because the whole COVID shit, you know, but like yeah. everybody, everybody started tuning into either they became pieces of shit or they started, <laughs> you know, sharpening their swords, you know? Yeah. And I had, and I had this, this podcast years ago and then I stopped because it was just very hard. You know, technology caught up basically yeah. during COVID. Yeah. And I wanted, I figured I say, hey, you know, it helped me kill time, stay creative and keep the brand alive. Yeah. And, um, you know, I love talking shit. I say, it gives me a chance to, to to touch base with my people and see people I haven't seen in a, in a while like yourself. Yeah, it's great to see you and talk to you, man. I haven't seen you like I'm trying to remember the last time. I think it was probably somewhere in Europe. In Europe, in, in Europe I think. Yeah. Yeah. And and I, I wonder <clears> even <throat> if it was um that's what we're gonna talk about. I was like, um, before we get into that, I was gonna say, um, right before the cause obviously this COVID shit fucked everything up, but besides yeah. that, um, right before the COVID were any touring? Did you have any touring get fucked up? Because I mean, was anything planned specifically or well, there was, I was playing, I don't know if you know or anyone else remembers, but I was playing with Hell Yeah, yeah, uh, which was Vinny Paul from Pantera's band that he had before yep. he passed. I was, in, I was um, just covering for, for him and being, you know, helping the band Hell Yeah. yeah. We had a couple of tours coming up during that time, and then, yeah, they all went to hell. And then, yeah, yeah and then that shit literally, right? Everything went mm-hmm. crazy. Everything then, went to hell. Yeah, yeah, right? It's so crazy, because I know... You know, everybody got screwed. I literally got screwed. The, oh, yeah, the, the lockdown happened that Wednesday. We were supposed to fly out Thursday for our first show that Friday. Right. In Europe. So we got fucking really screwed right near the end. You know what I mean? Yeah. You you guys have been going hard since the first day. I mean, since I've since I've known you guys. Yeah. I mean, you, wow. You, you know, the routine like, you know, that yeah. New York hardcore style is, um, bam, you know, bam, bam, it's, bam. It's, it's, and especially you, you know, you know. Especially with you, why um, uh, why I find you real interesting and why, you know, I like who you are in our world because, obviously, you're doing bigger things and some cool shit outside of the hardcore world. But yeah. you a real hardcore dude, like a real hardcore dude. Like <laughs> there's real hardcore people around, but like you know what I mean. Like you have a big history, and to me, like seeing where you came from and where you went and where you still going. You know, yeah. that's that shit that, you know, we root for, you know, that, you know, that from day one, when you got, if it was whatever, if so fly, if it was the next thing, we were rooting for you. You, Johnny, right on, were like, hell yeah. You know, it's like, that's what, you know, no, you that's know. cool, man. Yeah, we're all here for each other, man. You know, I never forget where, where I come from, how it, how I got here. You know, it's all part of the journey. Like, that's a, something I, I would could never, ever, you know, never forget, you know, I'm yeah, proud of where yeah. I come from. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and especially, you know, I, I like it, you know, like as you know, you know how it is like um for us, we're, we're, we're from, you know, we're, we're, we're from the, the gutters of the music scene. <laughs> so whenever we run into our people that are executives or they're a doctor or they're a policeman or they're in another world, but somewhere, you know, we kind of, you know, there's that special bond that yeah, is more always. than. Yeah, it's always a very always. it is a special thing that whole punk hardcore bond i don't know why but it seems more you know i don't hate on metal i love metal and i love hip-hop and they got great scenes but something about our world that have this you know uh, you know there's there's haters everywhere well, you know what but, it is i mean like, all the all the scenes that as you you can remember it back then in new york all the scenes kind of intersect you know and yeah. everyone kind of hung out with each other it didn't matter you know yeah. what what your music background was you you guys were all from the same yep. you know, area you all you all got along you know like yeah. i hung out with different scenes man i hung out with people that would have gone would have gone to see sonic youth and and the swans i hung out in that scene yeah. i hung out in the punk scene i hung out in hardcore scene. A hardcore and punk rock to me were, were pretty much together anyway i mean that's yeah. that's the same thing it's just yeah. a little different stylistically yeah. but I mean, I, I even hung out with club kids. I worked at yeah. clubs, you know. Of course, um, that's New York. That's what I was yeah. saying. Like, I hung out with hip hop guys. I mean, like, I, mean I worked at all these I know the clubs, places. exactly. Yeah. Like, that's the special thing about, you know, obviously, we always, New York hardcore, and we, you know, we, we, we say it proud, and, you know, yeah. we love the whole scene, of course. But yeah. the special thing about that hardcore shit in New York was that, like you said, um, 
that mix that you grow up, you know, from punk rock so extreme to hip hop so different to club and everybody we mixed, we all got along. Everybody lived in the same world, mm. ate at the same places, but we loved. That's what I loved. Bit. That's what I loved about you guys. Like you guys had that hip hop element, but you guys were metal, but you were yeah. hardcore. Yeah. Was, I mean, I mean, Freddie's practically rapping. Yeah, yeah, it's, exactly. It's fucking awesome. Yeah, from, like from set it off. I mean, that, that record to me is like, yeah, I, I know. That and then, um, and it's crazy. And let, and let me ask you this because I saw, but you know, I know you always been a, a talented dude, and I've always even heard because I see, you know, as a drummer, I'm a big fan. You know, that you brought flavor to a lot of rhythm bands. section, man. Yeah, rhythm section. So I know, a good, and I know a good rhythm section and the style that I like. <laughs> and you have that, you know, your jungles in your blood, you know, you can't oh, help that. <laughs> you know, that you know, what's up. But um, yeah. I saw that you were doing, you know, which is this something newer or something later? The, the the electronic stuff that you do now, you have, you know, all the crazy mad scientist stuff you fuck with. What's that all about? I've always been kind of doing that, even back then when I was in the scene. Like, um, my brother was really heavy, heavily into the electronic things. So the synthesizers has always been around me, even before uh -huh. I was into punk. I mean, I was kind of like kind of together as I was yeah. getting into punk. I was getting into electronic music. Like you know, early Human League and yeah, and stuff like that. You know, um, and early you know Ultravox and Kraftwerk. I mean, those Kraft, are those are yeah. those are the bands that really got me honed in onto electronic music. So even though through the '90s, when I was uh, you know just getting out of Nausea, I was in a, another band with John John from Nausea, another band called uh, Thorn, which was kind of more electronic but more industrial with some metal on top of it. So I was using a lot of uh, samplers and sequencers then and doing remixes and i was really into drum and bass and like some like acid house music and shit i yeah. used to love all that stuff so i worked at a lot of those clubs that played that so yeah. it was an influence you know what i mean yeah you feel so, the pulse you know and if you're yeah. a drummer or into that yeah it's gonna naturally you know yeah. uh, rhythms rhythms it's a drum you know? yeah it's a drummer thing i'm attracted to <laughs> yeah. i love that yeah. and even yeah. working at, at places like save the robots like the after hours clubs i was exposed to a lot of different music a lot of different you know hip-hop or house or anything else playing at the time like shit i mean soul yeah. to soul was always playing i love yeah that. i lo still nah. love soul to soul hell Just yeah no, but, but those are, and those are great drums though like you know that type of stuff Program, is but solid, it yeah. awesome solid the beats, beats. Are fucking amazing yeah yeah i yeah. love beats man i and, love beats i love i love like you know shit like you know the old 80s hip-hop like you know curtis Blow yeah. and utf utfo and uh you know obviously run dmc yeah. and those big you know, drums down productions that shit now, yeah now, now let me ask you so was the your, your brother who was into that he was older than you younger than you he's 10 years older than me also yeah. also he was already up on some other shit yeah i mean he he steered me in the right direction with a lot of different kinds of music from the get-go i mean from like the 70s it was all for me it was all about kiss he got me into kiss i got into acdc black sabbath led zeppelin like that was my my those are the bands of that decade yeah. for me and then 1980 came along i was already figuring out punk and all that just through seeing Devo on Saturday Night Live for the yeah. first time in 1979. And then it just, just pretty much opened the floodgate there. And I got into Ramones and yeah. Pistols and, you know, I Joy Division, that. Killing Joke, all that shit. You know? I hear that a lot, that a lot of people that um, what, that one of their early, if they're coming into the punk stuff, like in that same time, the late 70s, it was, yeah. it, I heard Devo, it was either the Devo or the, you know, the Sex Pistols or the Ramones. Yeah. Even, I've been hearing a lot more um, the Devo coming up and the Sex Pistols, people saying, oh, I saw the Sex Pistols and I was like, what is this? And then started it's different, you know? Yeah. Well, obviously, the Ramones for me was probably the first for, foremost because, you know, I'm from Queens. I'm from Forest Hills. They're from Forest Hills. So I, I looked up to them immediately. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, that's amazing. A yeah, punk, it's close to punk home. rock band from the same fucking part of town I'm from. That's amazing. Yeah. You know? I ended yeah. up getting to know them later, which was cool. You know, I used to know Joey. Awesome guy. You know, he lives literally like told me he grew up like on the other side of Queens Boulevard from where I was. Yeah, it's like, crazy. Yeah. Hometown yeah. heroes for us. You know, you hear totally. that, you know, Ramon's yeah. living and going to Forest Hills. And, you know, that's all like, <laughs> you know, those yeah. are rival schools and shit. So like, yeah, yeah, they are. <laughs> and then, so, all right, you got that early. And then, you know, the punk stuff or whatever, like, so your early punk stuff, what was it like? Did you come up like all these other guys, like um, with the Max's Kansas City and that whole world? And that? Oh, no, I'm, I'm not that old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because to me, it's, you know, I'm... I, that's I'm, way before I, my time. That's what I mean. That's some old, but I, I know 
again, back then, not you know, there was a lot of young, young kids also. So I wasn't sure if you were part of, well, one of those. We all know the youngest kid that hung out at Max's Kansas City would be Harley. Harley. Again. Yes, he was definitely like that guy. He's like was then was been there from the beginning. Yeah, that's the guy. That's the guy you need to talk to Max, Max's Kansas City. About. Yeah. Or Howie Pyro is another yeah. another guy. He used to be in Degeneration and The Blessed, and you know those guys. That's their scene. My scene was way later. I mean, like I was living in Philly, Allentown at the time. I didn't live in New York always. All right. I grew up the first five years of my life there, and once my parents split up, you know, we couldn't really afford to live there anymore, so we lived in Pennsylvania. Uh huh. And um, so by the time I was older, like you know, 15, 16, my brother and I used to go up to New York and see bands. I used to go to the Ritz. I used to go to the Stevies. And then go home, you know, but then after a while, like, you know, I want to, I want to live here, man. I want to, I want to be part of the music scene here because there's nothing going on where I was living. Not really. I mean, there's good, there's great shit going on where I was living, but I wanted to be in New York. I want to be in the thick of it. Yeah. That's where I, I thought that's where I belong. So I ended up there eventually like late eighties. Yeah. Nausea was pretty much the reason why I moved there. Yeah. You know? so, so, yeah. So how, all right. So how did that fall? Because to me, I know you, well, you know, our first most interaction with me, like for me personally with you, obviously you knew Raj and all those guys way mm-hmm. earlier. Me was from, yeah. you know, what you will talk about. And I always tell everybody that you were one of the dopest sound men. I always talk about it. And that's my shit. And I remember you, you and I first met was at Wetlands. Actually. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, I and that. I remember being like you were the, the first guy to make it sound like a real band. Oh, and you we guys were like. Well, you guys played great, so it was really easy to mix yeah. you guys, to be honest. And <laughs> I was like, but you know, we never had a sound man, but we were just starting, you know, we had obviously guys like Maddie Henderson and Willie, like tight players, and I'm newer, but I'm like, yo, you know, we're coming up, we got to sound like a machine, and then, but we never had a sound man, and I remember playing <laughs> and hearing that shit, and I was like, I couldn't believe it. And then I was like, any do sound, you know, you're a drummer, any do sound, like to me, you know, I, I was such a, uh, when especially younger, you know, I was thinking mm. you you only allowed to do one thing. You know, you can't be, <laughs> you know, like if you if you if you spread yourself, you know, you're gonna be whack. And I, you know, not yeah. thinking like, no, you could be dope at a lot of things and just give it a chance. Well, that was my way to make ends meet so I can survive and live there and be lucky to play a show at the end of the month and rehearse. You know, I did whatever whatever you know I, I could do to 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 achieve that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, or work at a, or work at a bar. You know, everything was off the books back then. You know. Yeah, yeah, no, but there's guys that worked everywhere. Yeah. But there's sound guys that will put the volume up, and then there's guys that will make you sound good, like you. You know, we could tell everybody. You know, all of us. That's why we were so, so psyched because we were like, "Holy shit!" Now we know how. You know, we could sound. You know, like I'm. You know what I mean? There's this. Uh, I always loved it when you guys like. Like when I get, you know, you guys called me to, to do your sound even elsewhere outside of wetlands. I'm like, this is Brad. You know, I get to yeah, go to CBs and do yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. done, I, 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 there's a couple of places I've done you at. I can't remember. Yeah, but I definitely CBs, CBs wetlands for sure. Yeah. There's one other place that I, I, I remember doing you guys in New York. Yeah, I, I forgot. Remember. what. Yeah, whenever we could back then, we were like, hell yeah, you know. And then um, and how did you f- get, get the nausea gig? How did that whole fall into place? Okay. That actually came about through a mutual friend, uh, John John. And my friend, this guy named Sean Roberts, he was a friend of mine that I knew in Philly, but I, he was from New York, but went, went to went to Temple University. And uh, I slept on his couch for a little bit. And it was like towards the end before I moved to New York. And I was just kind of bumming around looking for a band to play with. There was really not many bands to play with down there that I could vibe with. I, I mean, I jammed with different people down there and it was great, but, you know, I couldn't really find the band that I really wanted to stick with. And then he told me like, hey, you know, my friend John John, you know, up in New York, you know, you remember Nausea? I'm like, fuck yeah, I know Nausea. And he's like, well, they're looking for a drummer. And then I told them that you're available and they want to audition you. I'm like, fuck yeah. And I had no money. So I borrowed 20 bucks off my friend, <laughs> Hopper Sean, to catch a, you know, an NJ train to Port Authority. Yeah. Like, a, 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 or I, I, I got there like, I remember getting there at like six in the morning <laughs> or seven in the morning like that. And I went and met John John at Save the Robots. The first time I've ever been to Save the Robots. And so at the time, I think Amy was working there too. Him and John John were there. So I went, met them both there. And the deal was I was supposed to go home with Amy back to Staten Island to stay at her house overnight or over, like, you know, overnight. And then the next day I was going to try out the band. And I stayed yeah. up for a whole weekend and they're like, you got the gig. And I went back home, like, yeah, went back home, pick, packed my stuff up. You know, all I came with was just a drum kit and a duffel bag of clothes and another $20 I bought. From the <laughs> <laughs> and for everybody out there, Save the Robots was an after hours club if, because it's a it was a staple in, in the LES. Like, you know, we yeah. all ended up there. 
you know, oh, yeah. we either worked there or ended up there or got thrown out of there or <laughs> was hiding. anybody who anybody who was anybody would be there. Yeah, I mean, hey. every all walks of life hung out there. You had great. You had dealers. You had you had drag queens. You had actors, actors, models, yes. DJs, everybody. Bands. Oh, so, New York. Yeah. Was, look, at, I love New York. It ain't the same. I don't want to be that guy. It ain't the same. Yeah. We know it ain't. But how yeah. great was it then? It was special. Like like that whole era, like. You could walk down the block and it's like, you're going to run into blood clot. Oh, you're going to run into Roy. I'm going to run into, <laughs> right? You know, it's just going to the store. You're running into Siv and this guy is uh, Chris Garver is walking. You know, it's, it was well, there's like, ton. Well, it was it was just oozing a subculture yeah. everywhere. You know, I don't I mean, I don't know what it's like these days. I'm sure there's still uh, some sort of subculture going on there, but that not that we're really aware of. I'm yeah. not aware of because I've yeah, lived man. here 20 yeah, years. I know. So. But I feel very fortunate and lucky to at least caught the tail end of that place when it oh, was the way it was. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, and I and the same thing with me. I caught the later end and I caught that and I was I'm happy because it was still that, you know, like yeah. Oh, I'll sure. go to Avenue A to get an egg cream and then you know blood cloud is walking. <laughs> and then <laughs> you'll see that Roger um right walking his dogs two blocks down. And then yeah. you know I mean exactly it was like you know it would be uh like a hardcore Disneyland for some European kids you yeah, know back then. Sure. You know no, it was mean? great man it was great it was great it was great you know growing up in in that time at that age right then and there and i learned a lot you know i really did let me ask you this because this is pretty funny so because i don't know what your situation was in allentown but i very much doubt it was squatting no and then (laughs) coming nothing like that there (laughs) exactly And, and coming into you know, especially then, you know, from obviously nausea, but also AF, they were part of the whole squat scene, you know, like, yeah. you know, they were that world. So you're coming from these worlds, you know, I, I never squatted, but I spent a lot of time in Roger's squat, you know, you, you know, hanging out, growing I up. I remember Roger's squat on 10th Street, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But we also know it's crazy to go there and be like, I also knew I go home. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> But not everybody did. How was that? Because. I mean, nausea was a staple in that world. That's why I said, like, well, I, you know. I can tell you, I can tell you my, my first experience with squatting even before I even was in nausea. All right. This, when I, this is when I was, this is when I was still trying to get back into New York while living in Philly. Um, and it's weird how I even got there. And I, before I even knew what the hell squatting was, you know, yeah. or the idea, the idea of it, you know, the idea behind it. So you, you remember a clothing store in New York called unique. Yeah, of course. It's on canal. It's on canal yeah. street. Yeah. Okay. So the owner was building another clothing store on South Street in Philly called uh, Unique. And all the workers that were building there were all from New York, okay? Especially three of the guys were, that, were, that were part of the crew, you know, the construction crew were, squat, were squatters. And um, the main guy, I can't remember his name, something Adams, John, John Adams or Adam Adams, whatever. He, he was the head of all of it. He lived on Houston Street. So... Once we started working on this place, they're going to be done. You know, like, well, we're all going back to New York. Do you want to come and hang out? I'm like, yeah, like, like you can come live with me for a while if you want. So I go, I go, I go with this guy. I stay with him and his squat. He was squatting on 7th Street, on the 7th Street squat in the basement. <laughs> and um, yeah, I never, I mean, I never lived like this ever in my life. Yeah. But I, I, did, I did whatever it took to get the fucking, get back exactly. to fucking New York and, yeah. and just, get to do some music of some sort yeah so i stayed in the squat from december to january and all i had was a sleeping bag he had a sleeping bag a space heater and a hot plate that was it oh it was rough man i'm like well this is what it is and then after a while um i ran a couple other friends made some friends there and and i ended up moving to this other squat on 11th street where where frenchie and Dominic and Yoda and all these people were living. I lived there for a little while, but then I, and after a while, I was like, you know what? I can't even find a job here. So I'm just going to go back. I went back to Philly, couch surfed a bit. And then that's when the summertime came and I got the call from Sean about nausea. And then I moved to New York officially, like within oh. like six months. So that was, that was almost like uh, you had like a little test run for going yeah. to nausea, the little, little taste, uh, the little squat uh, life. Hey man, I do whatever it takes, man. That's my mo. I do whatever it takes, get her done. Yeah, no questions asked. Just fucking do it. You, you know, know, I love talking about that, and 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 I bring up the squat thing. You know, I, uh, you know, part, you know, because it's part of our um history that's getting forgotten about. Like yeah. you know that that those type of worlds, because now the squats different. Now it's like they'll call More it organized. Yeah, and it'll be called like community this, and people see it in a different light. 
when yeah. I got no beef with it and, and you know, nothing, you know, shout out to everybody. You know, it basically housed us for many years. Well, I, got, I, I got no, you know. Well, the idea of it was, you know, just to take a, a place and not let it go to waste. That exactly. was the idea. And exactly. when I went, when, I, when you first go to Europe and you see these squats, you're like, wow, man, <laughs> that's like, that's what we're trying to do. And it, it's yes. so organized and put together. I and mean, that's the first time I ever seen that. Like yes. in 1990, when we went and toured to Europe, we played all the squats. Yeah. And it was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. You start seeing like, oh, this is what could be done. That's how it's me. Okay. Yeah. Cause that's for me. You know, again, I did. I never. My first experience with, with squats was when Freddie came and going to Roger's squat. But this was the later one. That shit was mm -hmm. hooked up. The one on on eleventh or tenth or whatever that was. Listen, besides the stairway going up being you know r rickety, Roger was yeah. hooked up. No, you know, Ro Roger's place was great. He yeah, did when a lot Amy of work lived, on when that. Amy was there, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But they he both did a lot of work on that. Exactly. They bought. They even the people. You know, good people, family people in the building. They, they all worked together. Came, yeah. And Roger yeah. had a spot that I was like, fuck, this, you got TV, phone, this ain't a squat. Like, I was picturing, like, you know, those other squats that we know of, you know, like. Well, a lot of those other squats were, you know, taken over by, you know, the wrong people and just yes. used it for the wrong reasons, you know exactly. what I mean? So exactly. I, I didn't want any part of that either. And yeah. after a while, you know, shit starts missing and it's like, okay, I can't yeah. handle this And anymore. then it becomes more of a, those are like drug dens than this squats, like where people yeah. are trying to make that's, something happen and it just becomes that's yeah. not right yeah, yeah. that's not right and, and yeah. how was that then because i started going to europe you know in um 94 so it was mm -hmm. still half squats half clubs and for the hardcore band so i still caught a lot of you know the early days but it's there was still some rough spots there was the hooked up squats and oh, yeah. there was still some really rough ones the how Germany was it for you guys back then well, Germany and Holland, I can I can recall right now, like those were the really like well put together, you yes. know, you know, squats, like we're really tight community and everyone just like, you know, with each other. I mean, of course, there's some places that weren't too together. I mean, when you got went more Eastern block, like those, those were really, Crazy those were hard. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're just getting their, their shit started. You know, they just yep. had communism. Communism was, was, was abolished by then, you know, like just a few years before. Yeah. So they're just, they're still just picking themselves back up. But the people on the Eastern Bloc were, were amazing. Oh, everybody yeah. in Europe was great, man. We yeah, got treated yeah. really well, and we worked with everyone, and everyone was cool to us. It was great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Out there, you know, again, you know, for, for us, that's my – I grew up there. You know, now, you know, yeah, I've been going – It's your to, second you know, home. <laughs> absolutely. It's insane. Like, I, I, you know, I'd be telling people, um, not till I sat down there in this COVID shit and, and really looked at it, me and yeah. Freddie haven't been off a of stage this long in 26 years. That's and insane. This, and, and, you know, and that was because he went to jail. <laughs> that was the right. only reason, you know, whatever, how many years ago, that was the, the mm -hmm. break. And, and just, and then we think about it and I'm like, man, I've been going this since I'm 19 years old. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. it literally, I grew up there. My whole adult life was there. And I noticed right. that now, like I always talk, you know, I always joke with my German friends and my, you know, we all do our <laughs> banter, but those are my, that's like, that's, 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 everybody, those are my brothers and sisters in Europe. Like I grew up with them. Since I'm yeah. 19, 20 years old. Yeah. And they grew with us. Now I've seen guy, people that grew up with us that came to see us the first time. They come with their girlfriends or boyfriends. Then they're getting married. Then they come the pregnant. Kids. Then the kids come. <laughs> now the kids are coming by themselves. Like, it's insane. Like It's pretty insane. I can't believe it's been 30 years already now. We, we, <sighs> we've been all doing this. I know. I know. It's, <laughs> it's I, you know, I see it with my hat to the back, like, you know, and, and like basketball shorts. I'm like, yo, grow up. I tell myself. <laughs> how, Boy, how crazy How crazy is, is it that you and I, like right now, we both witnessed Europe change from 1990 yeah. something to now. I know. Like back then. I mean, there's still, it was all, country, it was just countries. Yeah. There was border, there was borders. There was, there was currency yeah. in every country. Now it's one currency. Yeah. You there's no borders. That. Yeah, exactly. Wild, Absolutely. And I remember like, and now, you know, it's now it's common for, you know, if, if you meet a German that does not know English now, it's weird. Cause everybody back then you would meet people that didn't know English at all. Remember mm. it used to be from the language, you know, um, exact, all the different currencies back then. Yeah. Remember that, you know, mm. You know, you travel, you fall asleep and you miss the border. The next thing you know, you got the wrong bling blongs, you know, for the next country. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. And that was all that. a bitch. Yeah, and you come uh, home, you come home with all this fucking different currency. Like, how am I going to change all this? Shit? 
yeah. 50 pounds, <laughs> your, your pants are dragging. Oh, I Dude, remember. Oh. I remember, I remember Poland, like we, you, you can't really change that money anywhere. The first time we were there, I was like, yeah, I was 20 years old. And before we left, I was like, well, I'm going to do it all this money. Like, we'll give it to someone. I'm like, all right. And there was an old, old woman, like just, you know, hanging out, like, you know, pushing her car to groceries. And I, I, I kind of tapped on her shoulder. She's like, she looked at me like, what? Like kind of like, <laughs> looked me up and down, like, holy shit. Like, what are you going to do? Yeah. And I kind of, I gave her all this money. It was, it was like a million dollars worth of slow <laughs> or something like that. Like a million dollar bill and a bunch of, she like, yeah. she's like, oh. I'm like, I go, this for you. I go, I, I, I'm not gonna be able to do anything. She like started crying. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm like, I go, this for you. I, I, yeah. I started crying. Yeah. I was like, like, <laughs> I know, yeah they, this is going to feed you for a month. Beautiful. Yeah. You know? It was great. Yeah. And, and back then I remember it's funny. You said Paul and it was during that era. Yeah. We were playing a spot. That um, so our backstage was so crazy little like a uh, bunker backstage with a hole that you could hear the band, and it was so <laughs> loud. And what and I remember, and me and Freddie, we were looking for stuff to stuff to stuff the hole up because it was so loud. Yeah. And we we took <laughs> the drinks that we had on our rider at the time, and what they were were, um, bags of milk in recycled bags. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they gave us. That was the milk and recycled bag. We were wow. like, "What the?" And we were stuffing the hole with it. But that was part of the the, the catering back then. And fro a frozen loaf of bread. Like when I mean frozen, it was a round bread, and it was a, like a cube of a, a block of ice in the middle. You and, kill someone with it. And the bags of recycled milk in bags. Wow. That was our catering back then. What and year was, was that? Uh, and it was even ninety four. Okay. It was still like you know a little bit then, but like we were still. You know, a lot of the punk rock hardcore clubs, again, like you said, like some of them were squats and you wouldn't know they were squats. They look yeah. fucking, you know, where people kept up yeah. and we were still playing some of the real political, political squats. Right. And it got sometimes where it was like, you know, they took pride in like, oh, yeah, look at those are our rats running over the food. You know, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, come on. Like, I'm a savage, but we don't got to be that savage. You no, know I don't mean? know about I don't know about that. That's pretty funny, though. But um. You know, I was going to say, I was going to say, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, but now, I mean, Poland is a different, different no. place, like in Czech Republic and, and, and all the Eastern Bloc. It's it's beautiful there. Now. Everything's pretty yeah. well put together now. They got it together. You know what? They're, sick doing, is they're that, doing, doing great. Yeah. Those countries were always a lot of it was beautiful, but we yeah. were playing in bands where our accommodations weren't so beautiful. <laughs> no, we weren't, play, we weren't playing the big, we weren't playing the, 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 the great places, but exactly. you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't change any of that though. I mean, like, no, hell no. I, I love that we got to see a different yeah. side of, of Europe in general, you know, the underbelly or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. I like that. I like that. We got to see it that. makes you appreciate where you went, you know, and where you're going, you know, and that's, yeah. you know, same thing, you know, following you and other guys like that, the same thing, you know, like, you know, um, I know myself, you know, that's how you appreciate the big gigs from the little gigs. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, like you really appreciate it. Like, yeah, yeah, it's dope. And yeah, this could be, you know, this is now and blah, blah, blah. But you're like, I remember those crazy shows. And you'll remember that one show with three people in it more than the fucking show for a hundred thousand. Cause it's just that moment, oh, you know, it's funny. You say that I do remember one show. I'm not, I'm trying to see if this is this correct or not. But we did play one show in Hungary and we were supposed to play a place called the Black Hole. Uh -huh. uh, it was a legit punk rock club in Hungary. But for some reason, I think the promoter and who, who was tour managing us at the time, they had a problem with each other. So he had to book us in a different place. So he booked us in this place that was more art based yeah. and more poetry. And people are into it. There was like an, actually an Andy Warhol exhibit going on upstairs in this place. And we played downstairs in this place that looked like the cavern where the Beatles played. And we showed up and played, right? We're, I think we're the only band that played. And it was packed, but it was packed with people fucking spitting on us. Oh, yeah. They hated us. It, I mean, it looked like, it felt, and looked like Sex Pistols playing at the Longhorn, Texas. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I'm I like, know. what the hell is going on? I'm like dodging, dodging freaking bottles and yep. spit. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? And there was one person, I remember John thought, he was going to get clocked as well. And he's, this guy came at him because the stage was like just a foot tall. The guy came at him, stepped forward, and John like Sid vicious him, like basically <laughs> hit him in the head with the bass, like bam, like get the fuck away. Yeah. At the end of the fucking night, a guy comes, man, that was the best show I've ever seen. He's holding his goose egg. He's oh, like, I love, I, I love nausea. I just got the <laughs> extinction album. I'm like, you? 
Yeah. Like you're uh, the only guy that liked the band. <laughs> the biggest. <laughs> oh yeah. And, but yeah, and that's one show I'll never forget. Yeah. That that's insane when that happens. And exactly like um, in the early days we experienced, because you know, definitely now, obviously, and it, it, things ain't the same when we were around. Yeah. You know, vibes and times or whatever. You know, I don't hate, but they're not the same. But back yeah. then, the punk rock element was still a big part of the hardcore scene where you Fuck had yeah. that could happen. Like we we played um, I never forget this show. And I think it might have been 96 or something. It was mm. we played Fuck Reading Festival in the UK, right? In England. <laughs> right. And it was it was great because I got to see, you know, we played with GBH, you know, wow. Peter the Test nice. Two Babies, the Anti Nowhere League, uh, yeah. the Weirdos. Um, fucking um, um, you name um, and we were on tour. It was us refused? I think Sick wow. might have played. Um, it was amazing as far as the the OGs. I got to see all the clouds like GBH here, perfect. Right. You know, right. but so refused goes on, and I just see them get covered. And shout out to refused, nice guys. But yo, I, I see love them that band. Get, yeah, I see them get covered in lungies, and I'm like, you know, we all know our history and whatever. And I remember me and Freddie looking at each other like first motherfucker that spits on us. It's on like we're jumping <laughs> in that crowd. We're fucking everybody. Uh, but you know what? I like to what, what I what I loved and why I gave even those scum punks credit. I think mm. they got the vibe when we got mm. on. Nobody spat at us, but it was a good show. You know, we didn't, yeah. you know, yeah. we don't hate on punk rock. It's part of the DNA. We don't hate on skin. Yeah, but you DNA. know what? Yeah, but you know what? I'm 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 from that, but I never fucking want to spit on anyone. Exactly. Those, you can't you can't you can't say it's a punk rock thing. This is a fucking asshole thing. Yeah, period. well, yeah, I know, but uh, you know, I don't fucking some spit of the, on anyone. I agree. Yeah. But you know, some of never those guys were like try to be the punk. They think punk is eh, right, right, right. That, those fucking guys I'm watching when, too exactly. many movies. <laughs> exactly, exactly. They're watching Quincy too much. Yeah. <laughs> How crazy <laughs> was the Qu you see kids? now don't know and i caught the quincy i was young young but because of my oh, you remember brother. that episode yeah because of the moshing <laughs> and all that shit uh, i want to see you choke yeah yeah, choke. yeah. And, and, and on chips too there was on chips right. they, yeah <laughs> william forsyth was a skinhead he was a skinhead on that it was amazing I think, that, I, I think the name of the band on quincy was mayhem yeah oh shit that's like legit like a legit something like name. that mayhem you know it's like no it's a fake bands you know a, a and, pseudo you know edgy punk name and and, uh, and let me ask you this because um i knew you played instruments but craig was telling me that you were an ill guitar player like what was your first instrument i know you're, you i know you dabble and everything but like what would you say is like obviously drums Drums, my drums primary. Your, your primary, and but guitar. You 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 came up playing a lot of guitar. I came up playing guitar. I mean, pretty much right after while learning drums. It was like drums, and then when I got to be like 10, 11 years old, that's when I started playing guitar. Because my brother had a guitar, so gotcha. I took the guitar and I started playing guitar. You know, really just really simple. You know, uh -huh. and and then when I got a hold of the whole punk thing, that's when I really started playing guitar. Because yeah. it's all chords. He, yeah, oh, I can do this. Yeah, I can do this. I don't have to be a fucking virtuoso. Yeah. I, I, I kept thinking like, I'll never be like Eddie Van Halen. Exactly. <laughs> that's a freak of nature. But I could do this. I could play Sick Boy by GBH. Okay, yeah. that's cool. I yeah. could play Sheena Was a Punk Rocker by Ramones. Fucking great. So yeah. from there, that's how I learned how to play guitar. And then I discovered Metallica and Slayer. Game yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. And even, yeah. With, even, with, even with drums. I mean, like, I was really hell bent into punk at that time. And I was not really given a lot of metal a chance because I was so elitist. Like, of Ooh, course. It's so metal. Fuck yeah, that. yeah, you can't. You're not allowed to. Yeah, back then you couldn't do that. But my best friend in high school sat next to me. He was like the token metal dude with the jean jacket and the vest. And I had the big mohawk. And he's like, Yeah, you like all that fucking punk shit, that discharge shit. Listen to this. And he gives me this tape. I'm like, Metallica, what the fuck is that? He's like, Dude. Yeah listen to it I'm like all right and, and it was it was um it was a uh, ride of lightning yeah first song by oh, yeah. like, okay this i'm in <laughs> yeah yeah i'm getting i'm i'm getting a second kick drum oh uh, yeah yeah you know exactly I mean? so okay happened. all right so you you know you started drumming early all right so now i can i can at least get you for three um, um styles that you were getting into all right so early on who was your, uh, a drummer that you looked into before the metal came in or before the oh. punk that's easy. I mean, there's three, uh, four actually: John Bonham, Peter Chris, Neil Peart, Stuart Copeland. Those oh, are my yeah, four drums. That's everybody. Yeah. That's my '70s decade idol and that, drummers. That, and that goes for everybody, right there. Yeah. You pretty much got a good, <laughs> you know. And um, yeah. and um, when you got into the 
punk rock stuff, who were the guys that you were like, yo, I, I like what they're doing? Because obviously what the four you named, that's the basis of any music, right? That you just named that covers everything. But well, I mean, there's, the guys, there's guys that were like, in the world. Well, for in the world of punk and no yeah. wave and all that shit. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a big list of them because there's there's many different subgenres of, of that of that whole underground pick music some scene. cool that would help with the because a lot of okay. kids, people here especially that know you know from obviously the punk they know from the, the rock and the you know the, the the metal stuff so what do you think were some of the elements of those influences that gave you you know the well for the punk part of it i mean i can go on and say like paul cook from the sex pistols he had a great fucking pocket groove mm-hmm. for that yeah. um topper heaton from the clash mm-hmm. um See uh Paul Ferguson from Killing Joke. Yeah. Pizza Paytas from Echo and the Bunnyman. I mean, I can go on. Yeah. Uh just really simple drumming, like Kevin Haskins from Bauhaus. Like they, they had a, a vibe. They weren't like like you know, virtuoso drummers like fucking Bottom and, and uh and Neil Peart, but they had a vibe and they had an yeah. attitude. Had a filthy fill from Motorhead and for God's sakes. I mean, that's the yeah. godfather of you know, yeah. you know? And then yeah. from there on, you know, Dave Lombardo, you know. Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask. Guys you like now, that for the know? metal, for the for the. Now you're going to the through the the thrash guys, the guys you like. Yeah, because to me, for me, for thrash, you know, my early my my drummers are Bonham. You know, you know, I, I I'm a Sabbath guy, but Bonham's the man. I love Bill Ward, of course. Oh, yeah, of course. Bill Ward. Sorry, so to, Bill Ward. No, of but of course, yeah. you know, that's flavor. You know, Bonham is flavor yeah. and technique, and and Bill Ward is soul and and flavor. And 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 you know those are like you know I love those guys like that style yeah. like and yeah. and then when the thrash came Lombardo was my guy and still to me I'm like all right when you take thrash you could start off that's a good starting point then you go yeah and end up wherever uh, thrash metal you know like his um, his drummer his drums I mean even to this day and is a is a voice you know it's not just yeah. drums yes yeah. it's, it's with the it's a riff it's like yes. a guitar riff you know. What I describe, so hey, yeah, because you know, I'm really a nerd when it comes to dissecting grooves and trying to find. You know, I'm always digging like an architect would like. Uh, what I, I want to find more how to get into what's a groove and the s, you know, the the soul of a groove. And with him, is is the same thing that Ward has. Their the groove, their, yeah. their groove, and their groove is them being. When I say sloppy, it's not sloppy in a bad way. Sloppy in the best way, where it's the it's a wobble, and yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. flavor, and that's what gives that. It just makes it meaty. And Ward has that, and Lombardo had that. Dave definitely you know, has that for you sure. Know, there's guys that are mechanically perfect, like like machines. I and like that too. That's great, I, and I prefer but, the groove though. Yeah, and 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 they have the right bands. That that it showed like because you know Slayer Metal you know uh, had a lot of fast picking but Lombardo had that that jungle and it was a good clash. Same oh, thing yeah. with Sabbath. Sabbath had you know bluesy riffs and that you could hear the alcohol, you could feel the alcohol on those <laughs> drums. Which yeah. is if you're gonna be an alcoholic, be a drummer and be Bill Ward. You know what I mean? That's yeah. the only time because <laughs> you hear that shit. It's just like. Well, there's the groove. The groove happens because, you know, you have Geezer Butler um, and Iomi sort of playing ahead of Ward. Yeah. Ward plays a little bit behind him. So it creates that pocket. Dave and, and Jeff Hanneman and Kerry King did the same thing. I mean, they're a little bit more on top of, yeah. of, of, um, of, of Dave, but occasionally you'll hear him go a little bit ahead. Yeah. You hear, you hear Dave kind of like push them forward yeah. and backward. Like exactly. make them slow down, make them speed up. You can hear that all over, like especially albums like South of Heaven. I mean, that, yeah, that song you can hear exactly. It. And this is what the gradual I gradual speed up. Yeah. yeah. And this is what I gave Lombardo. And this was my beef for metal because I always loved metal. But my beef yeah. with thrash was, you know, the, the riff that the music stops. Now they got the hard riff kick in. The hard mm-hmm. riff kicks in and us being hardcore guys, we want that shit to come in with a beat down riff. You know, a yeah. drum beat, like, you know, <laughs> bam, 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 and we want a jungle beat. Mm-hmm. The metal guys go, bam, 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 and they, they, they kind of up pick it. Lombardo started mm-hmm. with that, 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 chi- that China bam, the bat, halftime. Bam, the bat, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, my God. You, you can credit, you can credit Celtic Frost, too. Yes. They had yes, that. Absolutely. And sh- sh- rest I, in I, peace, I always, Martin. I always, yeah, I always thought Celtic Frost was a, was, right. was an in, in, influence on a lot of New York hardcore. I can Big hear it. Time. Dark, Dark side had it. Sheer Terror. They all had this like yes. that sound, that Celtic Frost kind of sound, you know. And you're completely sure. right. And 
I'm glad I always try to bring them up and I'm glad you did because I love they're, that band. they're a band that's getting forgotten about. And, and a lot of people, bitch, is crazy. Yeah, because, you know, people forget like, you know, all the Metallicas, all the Slayers. Those were the bands they were listening to with the Cel- right. Celtic Celtic Frost. You know, they were yeah. writing the book on that. Yeah. Uh, open chord metal. Like if you yeah. heard the punk rock in it. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And then but it was something else. It's and different. Fucking, Oh man, yeah, morbid, morbid tales and uh, and uh, uh, to make to make a theory on the, yeah. those two records are are gold to me. I and, still listen to them to this day. Absolutely, and rest in peace to Martin Ames, the bass. Martin, Ames, yeah. yeah, Martin. Yeah. People don't know this, and I always try to give him you know shout outs whenever I can. He's a big reason why hardcore made it to fucking Zurich, Switzerland, because he owned wow. a club called the Luf Club, a small right. bar, and he yeah. brought every New York hardcore band and every band. Hardcore band because he loved it. I, yeah. I knew him very well. We used to bug out all the time. And I love I this place. It, and I'm like, yo, I can't believe it. You know, I used to hit listen to him when I was a little kid, and you know, mm. classic. And now he's booking yeah. my shows, kind yeah. of shit. Oh, you actually yeah. played there? Yeah, we played there like fucking ten times. Wow, I've like, hung out there a couple times. I, I never got to play there, but that's cool. You played there. That's yeah, awesome. And look, I'll give you a quick funny story. I think I said it on this before, but so. You know, it's the early 90s and it's us on tour. And I actually think Mike Dijon was on tour with us. All yeah, right. right. But Stigma was on in the band still. So yeah. so it was a very small club. And in, in, in Martin's club, in the bathroom, it was the first time we ever saw, you know, those toilets where you flush it and it automatically cleans the toilet seat. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, and we're like, <laughs> holy shit. So Stigma is holding me it again. <sighs> and Stigma is doing it and doing it. And then Stigma does it one time too many and, and it breaks, right? So we're like, oh, so me and him are like little kids. We, we you know, we run out and this is the early 90s or whatever, you That's know, fucking we run out and, and this goes on. But then fast forward now, obviously he passed away not too long ago, but um, mm. they had did a, a, a trip to con, the other band they have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, they had did a reunion or something in the early, in the 2000s or sometime. Mm-hmm. And we're playing yeah. a festival with them. And I said, oh, shit, let me go. You know, they're playing the main stage. I said, I want to go see Martin. I want to, you know, I, I haven't seen him in years, like right. many years. Right. So I said, fuck it. I'm going to go to the main stage and see what's up. So I'm going to the main stage. And it was a real heavy metal stage. Like, you know, like I think I'm on a Marth, you know, hair yeah, yeah. everywhere, like that type of metal guys. So yeah. I'm going through everybody. I said, all right, let me get a spot. You know, they're not going on yet. But I said, let me get a spot on the here or whatever and i'm mm. looking around and i just see it i'm looking at this big guy i see this one guy dressed like a priest or some shit a monk and kind of looking That's Martin. at me <laughs> yeah looking at me weird i'm looking at this guy weird like i'm like he's probably fully thinking, made up right like yeah but the yeah, guy's yeah. looking at me and i'm like what well, fuck this guy he probably thinks i don't belong here this is what i'm thinking and i'm looking at him and i'm like what the fuck is this guy looking at? and then finally i'm like <laughs> i said yo yo i said something like that right. and i see a smile and then i go wait a minute martin and he starts laughing and he goes, oh, yeah, I was tr- I was waiting to see how long it would take you before you recognized me. Because last I saw him, he had a shaved head, camo right. shorts. And I go like this. Oh, shit, Martin. Oh, I'm surprised you recognized me. And he goes, how could I forget you? You guys broke my toilet. I never forget that. He remembered so he, that. So shit. he knew it. <laughs> you know, but I forget. I was like, yo, I'm sorry about your toilet. I'm like, for stigma, cop in a plea. But, Amazing. Uh, but shout That's out amazing. to fucking Celtic Frost, rest in peace, Martin, and rest in peace to your toilet too. Hey, when, <laughs> hey, when, when, that would have been the the monothyst record they they got together to make. It was like two thousand six, probably. Yes, yes, that sounds even right because it was like because I was with Stone Sour and we played Grass Pop with them, and that was probably the last time I seen Martin too. All right, and and this is what I was gonna get into. And I'm glad yeah. you said that because. All Great right, album, so by the way. so right after, yeah, yeah, what right after the nausea happened. What was the next band in? Because I I've seen you with Soul Flight and Stone Sour and you're mm-hmm. throughout the years, but yeah. I keep forgetting in what order, and what's what. So how did well, it form? There's a couple of bands I was involved with between yeah. Nausea and Soul Flight. I mean, I, I when Soul when Nausea broke up, John John and I and Steppen, the guitar player from that band, Winter. You remember Winter? Yeah, of course, New York kind of hell, hell, grindcore, yeah. yeah. That yeah, was like Hell New Hammer's York's kind of grind cause shit. Oh yeah, what the but they're, they're more they're more doom metal actually. Yeah, doom they're, metal. They're, they're so slow. Um, oh yeah, they were hard. They were great. So we we started a band called Thorn. That was that industrial metal band I was talking about. We did that for a few years, and then I ended up I joined up with with Shelter 
Toy Redemption. Yeah, I remember months. you did a shelter. Yep. Yeah, that was great. I um, forgot all about that. And after that, I played with Crisis for a little while. Yep. Remember Crisis? Yeah, of course. Girl with the dreads. Yeah, Karen, the girl with the dreads. Singer, yeah. Female and they singer, were doing it. Yeah. yeah, she killed it. She was Abzal, killer. Abzal on guitar. Yeah, she was yeah. awesome. Played with them. I did a recording with them, recorded on their album, that Halloween, the Halloween record. It was like me and two other drummers, like Chris Hamilton was playing drums on it. Jason Bittner from Shadows Fall. Yeah. Overkill, he was on it. Yeah. And then after that, that's when I joined up with Max and did Soulfly, and I, you know, yeah. Now we're here. <laughs> and, when, and yeah, and the Soulfly thing, it was you were just doing the tour. You did some records with them. No, I, I did the record. I was their, I was their, their original drummer, the first yeah. drummer. Okay, yeah, because yeah. I get confused because uh, I would meet different guys like from you and then Johnny that were in the band, yeah. and then I catch us and I get confused. You know, of, of, of. Uh, Johnny's way later. He yeah, actually yeah. he's ca he's Cavalera conspiracy. He was in exactly. That That's what I but mean. There did. was. So fly he, Cavalera, yeah. the Sepultura, and yeah, yeah. And, and so I did the first, I did the first album with Soulfly, and you know I was with them up till about you know ninety nine. I, I was out, I, I was out of the band for a bit, and I came back in two thousand one, did the third uh -huh. album with them, yeah. stayed with them till two thousand three, two thousand four, and then and then we just parted ways again, and then yeah. I kind of did some you know a little bit of music here and there, not much. I was playing with. Um, this band called a bloom for a little while. Uh -huh. um, this is before joining stone sour. I played with them, played some shows. We did some demos, but nothing really came from that, you know, unfortunately, but the band was really cool. It was yeah. with members from that band. One side zero. I don't know yeah. 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 Them. I heard of them. Um, and Mikey and Marcelo from Soulfly. We all had this band together and then I, we kind of just, you know, faded away from that. And then I kind of stopped playing drums for a while, man. I didn't think I was going to really, Continue with it. I'll kill no, you. I, you I, quit I, I put, I, dude, I did. I, I literally put my sticks down. I quit. I ended up working in my, my wife's shop for a little while doing hair extensions on people. Yeah. That was fun. <laughs> um, and then I got a call from from Dino Cazares from Fear Factory yep. to come play with them on that that Roadrunner United All, All Stars compilation. Yeah, he's one. Of, he's one. Of, yes, I did that with him for a while. And I played a, sh a live show with them, like, you know, you know, to put, you know, to celebrate Roadrunner's 25th yeah, at the Nokia the, in New York. Yeah, the, the New York. Yeah, you yeah. see, I had got it. I was dealing with a fucking injury I had at the time because I was because the guys covered some mad bullshit. Um, yeah, Jamie and, yeah. and those guys. And I was invited yeah. and I was going to go, but it was because of something. That was the only reason I didn't show up. But it, it looked like a cool thing. I saw the video it afterwards. Great, dude. Yeah, it was man. so much fun. It was. I can't believe that. We all pulled it off like that. Yeah. I mean, it was. I mean, everybody did their part. Yeah. You know? Some of us got a little wasted. I'm not. Yeah, yeah. Not, any names. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, well, it, it wouldn't be. Time. No, it looked good. Everybody looked good, and I like that. Uh, you know, I think it was a. Uh, it was done proper, like our world. You know, the more underground and legit, not just to give a token hard band some shine. It's like the whole movement in the world. A lot of people got shine. You know, Roadrunner was a special thing. You know, we were lucky too to be an, on Roadrunner at that time. It was a special yeah. time. You know, music. You they know, started the, our careers. Yeah, absolutely. Variety. Absolutely. For sure. You know, I mean, I've been and, on Roadrunner since since you guys run like since 94 with yeah, Thorn. Exactly. I'm, I was on three Roadrunner, four Roadrunner bands. Yeah. Now, <laughs> and, and, and um, when you um, um, how did the Stone Sour thing come up? Did, so you got a call to go try out or did you know any of those dudes before that or? I, I kind of knew Corey from Slipknot. We weren't like the best of friends, but we knew each other just yeah. through Soulfly and, and just years of, you know, crossing paths and playing shows together. And I didn't see him for a few years after that. Um, I got a call from their their um, their producer at the time who I was friends with, still friends with, um, Nick Rasky Lennox. And at the time I was, I was in L.A. Um, just, you know, practicing on my own to actually play with Sepultura for a little while. So I played with them Again, yeah. uh, and I got that gig because I played with Andreas at that Roadrunner United thing. And I played a couple of Seppel songs. And at the time, Igor was taking a break from them because he was, you know, he was him and his wife are having a baby. He's like, I'm not going to go on tour. Fuck it. Yeah. I want to stay home with my kid. And so they asked me if I wanted to step in, you know, for Igor and, and do those tours. I'm like, yeah. So while I was practicing for that, I got the phone call from, from Nick to uh, come in and play some songs for Stone Sour because, you know, they needed a drummer to, to finish off this record. And I didn't know any of the guys. I didn't know any of the songs. Yeah. So I just kind of like heard the songs and played to a click track with pre-recorded guitars, basically. That's yeah. I've never done it like that in my life. I'm used to just being in a room with a band playing. Yeah. So I'm <laughs> like, how is this going to work? Well, you just played a click track. You have the guitars, play the guitars and click track. I'm like, okay. 
and then you take the guitars away and then they re-record guitars yeah. to my drums. So that's how I learned how to do that. So I did that for like three days and a week later I get a call back from them and saying they want me to join the band, and, you know, as a full member. I'm like, absolutely. Never had that before in my life. Yeah. yeah I never, I never been part of a band that made crazy me because normally I was a hard gun the whole time. Yeah. And last and time I was in a band that was a full member was nausea. You know? Yeah. And how great is that, that it'll be with the bigger band you, you end up with it later when usually that doesn't happen. Never, you know, ever, never no. happens. Exactly. No. And, and I kind of no. remember when stuff was coming down, like, um, I remember with Johnny when, um, how long did Johnny get in the band after you? Johnny joined, joined the band, uh, 2012. So, uh, he, many... he wasn't on the, he wasn't on the record that, that record, the 2012, yeah. the house of little bones record. He joined yeah. after that and was our, was our touring bass player. Yeah, but we but no, no, he was in the band. Yeah, he, but then yeah, he was a, he, he was officially made a, made the member once we made the last record. Gotcha. But, yeah. he, but in my eyes, he's always been the member since, yeah. since 2012. Yeah. So, yeah, he's been with us since 2012. No, because that's what I remember. Like, not he, he, it was just something when we were talking something about like, yo, you know, like, well, I, first of all, I was glad when he was like, yeah, I'm, you know, it's a dope gig, you know, you know, right. we, you know, and he's with you. And I was like, yo, you chilling. And I was like, you know, and he was like, you know, we were talking. I was like, yo. Forget what anybody says. Don't let any haters. If you worried about haters or anything like that, yo, fuck everybody. You got a chance of a lifetime and you're a killer. And with your instrument, do it. And then I remember also, you know, also hearing from him just in general, like, nah, you guys, are, that you two are, are taken care of, you know, real men, like members and everything is, you know. That was dope, tight, man. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, that's dope, man. I'm like, yeah, hell yeah. Good. And that's why, I, you know, I get psyched for that, like, you know, when I hear that these bands and I'm like, oh, my boys played that. Yeah. You know, he was a hardcore band, right? It's you crazy know? that we both come from the same scene. and We both ended up in the same band like like years later. Because I yeah. actually met I actually met Chow years ago when he was in Zero Tolerance at Wetlands. I did sound for him back then. Yeah, crazy. I mean, I didn't really know him, but I knew who he was. But then we got to know, then we got to know each other later when, when he moved to L.A. Yeah. I've known him from even before he was in Stone Sour. Yeah. He moved to L.A., I think, what, I want to say 2001, 2002. And that's when I started to get to know him again, through, you know, through a, a mutual friend. This girl, Yael, played drums. Uh -huh. He's playing this band called My Ruin. Uh -huh. And that's when I really started to get to know Johnny. Yeah. yeah. And you know what's funny? You said that you doing sound from at Seabees. I no, went, Wetlands. At Wetlands. It's funny. I met, I didn't meet him, but one of the other guys in his band, when I was with my old band, walking up and down the line at Seabees, selling my demo. And Which I brand? ran into this at demise. It was just oh, you demise. That's right. Yeah. You were demise. And then I remember yeah, yeah, yeah. going up. I was walking up and down the line. Yo, five dollars, five songs, five dollars. <laughs> this is the hardest <laughs> shit. That was my line. And then I remember. <laughs> That's great. I, 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 um, one of the guys in his band. I might have been the singer. And one of the other guys. Mm. He was like, "Yo, you want to trade?" And he was like, "Hell yeah!" And he goes, "Yo, we from Buffalo." I was like, what are you doing here? Like, that's so far. Like, I was like, what are you crazy? And he's like, yo, check it out. And we traded demos. It was zero tolerance. And I was like, all right, cool. cool. And then fast forward, you know, Johnny ended up playing in a bunch of bands, you know, with everybody in New York. And everybody. Then he, and then, you know, again, we didn't see each other. And then he started popping up with the Soul Flies. And, you know, mm -hmm. shout out to the Sepultura guys for freaking um, get, giving yeah, like, the New York hardcore guys a, a fresh air fund. You know what I mean? <laughs> Getting them out of the LES in New York for a little bit and shit. Yeah, so man. Fucking, um, no, but not it's good. And um, what's the deal now? Like, well, what's it looking like on your end now with anything? You know, what are you hearing? Music or you just you just cold weight or you just. I'm just waiting, planned? man. I'm waiting just like you, man. Uh, I mean, I don't know anything what's going yeah. on. I mean, even for Stone Sour, I don't even think there's anything happening with that yeah. for a very long time because Corey's got other stuff going on. He's got his solo band. He's got Slipknot coming up. And yeah, um, shit. I mean, Chow, he's 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 taking care of business with his with his restaurant, restaurant. the Cito Chow's in Buffalo. Kick ass place. Yeah, sure. I want I want I want to get him here. Um, I want to get him on too. Definitely. You got to get him on here. Absolutely. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. I miss and, that guy. Man. I haven't, we haven't seen each other like, fuck, man, almost <laughs> two years. <laughs> crazy. Can't crazy. believe it, man. And, yeah. um, and, 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 with, and anything with the electric stuff, you releasing any of that shit or are you just doing that for, for therapy? <laughs> A little bit of both. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know how it's it is. It's very I got therapeutic. It. Yeah, it's yeah. very therapeutic. Well, I mean, I, I, I'm always, I'm always constantly recording stuff on there and I'm I always kind of like make sketches and I put it away on a hard drive and 
mess with it later. Kind of yeah. like, you know, here's some ideas. And I don't, I don't write full like pieces. Sometimes yeah. I'll record myself for like 20, 30 minutes at a time and just improv, you know, yeah. and then just kind of comp from there and like cut and paste like parts that I think are great and then work from that as a foundation and then make something out of that. That's usually yeah. how I work. Yeah. Um, but I'm also working on a, on a, on a film score right now. I really can't talk too much about it, what it is, but, but that's dope. something, something really, really, uh, really good. And um, hopefully uh, it'll come out this year. And, and, yeah. and that's the electronic stuff you're doing or a little bit of everything is music in well, general for the scoring stuff. Well, the score is going to be, it's not going to be all electronic at first it was, but then the director and the producer and myself thought it'd be better to have it a little bit more cinematic, a little, a little bit more orchestral yeah. movement in there. So I'm making a hybrid of orchestral and, and uh, synthesizers. So oh, I'm using yeah. like a, I'm using like an orchestral library. I use um, Vienna instruments in case anyone wants to know what it is. It's a, it's a software program. It's all sample based library. You use native instruments uh, contact or, or actually you use their, their uh, interface engine Vienna wow. instruments. It's great. It sounds great. Like I can have access to a whole 50 piece orchestra and like set a touch of a button. That is and dope. it sounds yeah. so realistic. The articulations are great. And I do like a, a combination of that synthesizers and I do, you know, make other my own sound effects like you know taking symbols and close micing them and tapping them and gotcha yeah yeah bending them slowing them down reversing them and just making it do things it's not normally you know what's not normally to do so, yeah so yeah. you just mad scientist that's what i always say i got you that i was like this guy's like a mad scientist <laughs> with these plugs always experimenting yeah, yeah. and um yeah. and, 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 and a, like i got a lot of kids i get a lot of young kids that listen to us and real quick before we end in general um Real quick, what was your first real kit and what are you playing now? And then real quick, tell, what's your word to any new drummers? Because I try to push this and I think you could um, um, uh, attest to this. You know, Sorry. You, that's all right. Um, you know, my, my, my whole shit. My bad. That's all right. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, you, you lay <laughs> right, well, down, you well, get comfortable. One more time, what, what, what were you, what were you no, saying what, again? What, what I was saying is um, with the drums, um, you know, um, a, 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 lot, a lot of kids um, um, are... You know, um, listen to this. A lot of new kids listening, drummers, and um, what what, what advice would you give kids? Because uh, I, I, this is what I was trying to get to. I do it with bass. When I was a kid, I used to think, oh, you know, I need, I need to have a SVT. I need to have an amp. I need to have a Fender P bass. I need, you know, when at the end of the day, um, the brand doesn't matter. It matters of it doesn't. You, you know, putting the time in, and you, you know, you know, sharpening your sword. You know, basically. And um, what I wanted to know from you real quick was your first real drum set. And what are you playing now? And also, do you feel the same way about, the you know, kids shouldn't worry about brands and fucking, you know, what the next drum is playing and worry about fundamentals? Well, first off, yes, I agree with you. Worry about the fundamentals. Don't worry about what brand of drums you're playing. As long as... <laughs> You have a drum, it has a skin on top and the bottom, you have a pair of sticks, that's all it needs to be. It doesn't need yeah. to be Pearl, it doesn't need to be DW. Yeah. Just get a secondhand drum kit. Go to yeah. Facebook Marketplace, go to eBay, get a cheap drum kit yep. and start there. You know, you don't have to have the best stuff in the world. As long as it, as it plays and you have the heart and the passion, yeah. that's all you need. Yeah. And it starts there. You have to have the heart and the passion. You, know? you, you can't just teach a kid to play drums. Like yeah, that that person, girl or boy, needs to have that in them. Yeah, you have that in you. You know, I, I don't I don't force that upon my daughter. Like I've shown, I mean, she's she's grown up around all instruments. Like I have pianos, guitars, drums. She's not gravitated to any of them. Though I every now and then I try to you want to come in and you know play some yeah. daddy. Yeah, I'm not really into them. Like okay, I don't want to push it on my kid because I want it to be Same fun here. for her. Absolutely, you know what I mean. Everyone's expecting us. Oh, your daughter playing drums yet? No. It's, yeah. She, maybe she's a late riser. I don't know. She keeps saying she wants to do guitar and bass, but I have that stuff and she can, yeah. you know, she's lucky she has that and she can use it. But for kids out there, you want to play drums, just get exactly. a decent set of drum kit. I mean, I, I went into my room to show you my first drum kit. I, I have a picture of myself with it. Oh, shit. Okay. That, the, oh, shit. There you go. You see everybody? With the KISS logo. Exactly. Look at that. Look at this that. Is that's, from, this is from 1976. That's a hard my, pick. That's a real. This drum, this, these drums aren't even real drums. Those are toy drums. These are stainless steel or whatever they are. They're, that's, they're steel drums. And it, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was bought at Toys R Us. And, <laughs> there you go. It was, 
They're called Sterling Beat. <laughs> yeah. How yeah. even come? It didn't even come with a snare drum. It just had two toms, a four tom, a kick drum, and a, and a crash cymbal. And funny enough, that crash cymbal, that position, it's still there on my kit to this day. Yeah, I'm still it. right here. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. That's what I try to tell kids. A lot of new kids, because um, you know, it, it, you know, it's like um, city kids with sneakers and just the youth, you know. You know, you th- you got to have the, what's new, what's hot and whatever. When I have the them Pumas. Of- <laughs> yeah, yeah. And at the end of the day, you know, even me coming up, you know, um, I had all pieces of shit equipment because I couldn't yeah, afford real way. shit. But yeah. I really wanted to write music. And I, I ended up, you know, um, teaching myself because I really wanted it. I, you know, and then I learned how to make what I had work. And that's what right. I tell people. I go, you learn how to work on. You know, you don't got the best gear, but you learn how to work on your ear. You learn how to work on your resources. You got to learn to work on on your hands because yeah. that's going to make that shitty setup sound better. The tighter you play. You exactly. Know I mean? You work with what you got. You exactly. Know? And, and, um, and, and play what the records. You, yeah. And what are you playing nowadays now that you're a big boy? Now you ain't well, a little boy no more. And Toys <laughs> R Us ain't going to cut it. Well, now. <laughs> well, now I'm playing. Um, I'm with DW. Oh, yeah. Good. I've been with and, them for the last last 16 years. Good. And, and, and was were they your first um, drum hookup? Like no, drum my hookup? first my first full drum hookup I think was was Tama. That, that that was you know only for a few years, but then DW like they take care of you. They, they once yeah once I started getting the ball rolling with Stone Sour, they yeah. they jumped in and I they they took me on. And and, and that's great with the they're with, a great company, especially you know great company and, and with drums, which is very expensive you know the bigger you know drums is one of very. those things you could you could add forever you know what yeah. i mean and I'm the very type of fortunate very fortunate and, and grateful to to have them with and me, have you're them doing and you're doing music now that could need more shit you know when you're doing more rock stuff you got you know you could do all the experimenting you want with getting more types of shit so it's yeah. endless so it's good you have a yeah. good company that takes care of you because um, absolutely yeah. you know that helps but that's a good shit. And um, um what, what what are you doing for the rest of the day today, Roy? What, what's your plan on uh, every day? What you be doing on a regular now that um well, all this COVID shit is going on? I'll probably jump in my room after this and just get on my gear. I'll probably play a little bit of drums just to get the get the cardio. It, it's it sucks, man. I, I mean, you play for like I play like forty minutes, forty five minutes. I used to play five to six hours because yeah. I had I had a goal. I had something to work. Yeah, at. yeah. And <laughs> there's nothing there's nothing to work with. There's no one to play with. It's like yeah, yeah, I, I don't play with anyone in a year. I mean, I, I do some recordings here and there for people, which I'm yeah. probably about to work on right now, which is great. I love when I have friends like say, hey, can you play on this? Like, yeah, it gives you yes. something to do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's what I'm going to probably hit right now. I have a Good. couple friends that I'm yeah. going to work with. Good shit. But, um, Yo, I'm not I'm glad. I'm really glad I got to get to cat to get you on here, man, because I really wanted to get you. And um, and um, yeah, man, I, I appreciate and I, it, man. And yeah, you know what's up, big fan, you know, of everything you're doing. And I'm rooting for you guys always. I want you guys to keep killing it. And I'm hoping where where you living now? You're in, in Cali, right? I'm in Los Angeles. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, you know, um, we're planning to record out there again. And when we go record me, out yo. there, at spot, <laughs> you got to come through and you got to come. Oh, kick hell it. yeah. And we got to play. Maybe we might get you on some bongos or some shit. You know, <laughs> Mabel's on some jungle shit. You never know really? what's going to come out of us. You never know. You hey, never man, know. We might, ha- we might bring the jungle to, to the studio. You know what I mean? Hey, you need some bongos. You need some chimes. You need some synthesizers. I'm exactly. your guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> some moods. We need some moods and shit. I'll, I'll get but, some mood in there. Yeah. Absolutely. But Roy, I'm glad I'm glad I, you, were, you were able to come on. Mad love to your family. Everybody. I love to you, brother. You know what's up? Go check Roy out. Check out Stone Sour, Nausea, all his shit. And if you need um fucking mood music, go hit him up. <laughs> <laughs> now, Roy, peace out. One love, hermano. You know what's up and talk to you soon. Love One you, brother. Love. Be good. Peace, bro. Later, homie. Peace.